It's quiet now along this newly open stretch of Davis Creek. The heavy machinery that removed a dam and excavated a new stream channel through the former Ellison Pond in the Kanawha State Forest have, for the most part, finished their work. The project to return Davis Creek to its natural state is entering a final phase. The channel's been graded uh, to pretty much its final grade. The only thing left to do now is install stream structures for both habitat and stream stability to help protect the banks from erosion in the future. Uh, the dam's been completely ground out and it's at its final elevation. Uh, most of the major excavation and earthworks been completed. Uh, now it's a simple matter of, of installing the habitat structures, the fish structures, uh, and the fishing piers. The area had been designated a special Class Q fishing area for several years by the West Virginia DNR for children under 14 and anglers with disabilities. If the project stays on schedule, the plan is to reopen the area for fishing sometime in April. When it's opened back up to fishing, uh, you'll see a lot different uh, system here than what you saw before. Uh, we went from a you know, rather shallow pond system, uh, slow moving water. This is going to be a little faster water uh, with smaller pools dispersed throughout the system. Uh, and the fish will be, will be dispersed out a lot more than what they were with, with just the pond that was here. Uh, so it's going to grant fishermen a little, a little bit more room to spread out. Uh, the Class Q and youth, there'll be multiple piers for, for the Class Q fishery. Uh, and it's also going to allow the youth fishermen to, to kind of separate out from them a little bit and be able to move up and downstream. It'll make for a less crowded environment uh, when it comes to the actual, actual fishing and, and the taking of the trout when they put them in. And those won't be the only changes. It will be reseeded with, uh, with native grass. Uh, as well as native trees and shrubs uh, throughout the entire area. So there will be a riparian area that's going to provide shade to the stream, which is going to help with one of the major concerns that, that the pond was causing, which is a temperature increase. Uh, the temperature difference between upstream and downstream of the pond was relatively significant when the pond was here. It was shallow, uh, and, and, and the sun actually heated up the pond several degrees throughout the summer. There's a lot of engineering that goes into a project like this. Everything from determining the radius of the bends in the new channel, to the width and the depth of the stream, to the height of the floodplain. But those aren't the only challenges. Uh, to get to this point was a, was a rather lengthy process. Uh, we had multiple permits and multiple state and federal agencies had to sign off on it. Uh, of course, we had to have a permit from the Corps of Engineers where we were doing in-stream work. Uh, we also had to have stormwater construction permits, sign off from Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, there are several endangered species in the area that we had to deal with, uh, one of which being endangered bats. There are two uh, bat buffers in the area that the endangered bats are utilizing. Uh, one is a hibernacula, uh, which is an abandoned mine portal that's located above where we're at. Uh, another, another major hurdle was, was the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, as most people are aware, the dam we removed is on the Register of Historic Places. And we have to mitigate for that uh, by making sure that everyone knows the historical significance of this site. The dam was built in the late 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps, not for flood control, but to create a public swimming area. But sandy soil present in the watershed quickly became trapped behind the dam, despite repeated attempts to dredge it out over the years. Informational kiosks telling the visitors the history of the dam and the work of the Civilian Conservation Corps will be eventually placed throughout the park, along with some of the hand-cut stones that were part of the original structure. At Kanawha State Forest, I'm Mike Huff for Environment Matters. Thanks for watching.